what have we been doing so far in this course. We started with fully connected networks, which are basically multi-layer perceptrons. They are useful whenever you have tabular data. We learned how to train them. We learned about the concepts of uh, training data, validation data, test data. We learned how to train on how to train our neural networks using stochastic gradient descent. And then we started worrying about images and trying to work with data that are a little bit more complex compared to tabular data. Uh, and then we set convolutions and convolutional neural networks are good choices in terms of the architecture of your neural network. And then we started with different types of convolutions. We have started with a basic convolution, then multi-column. This is useful whenever you want to do model parallelism. Then we introduced uh, AlexNet. Then uh, some of the useful techniques while training neural networks are dropout or uh, another architecture is networking network, VGG. Then the trend was going deeper with convolutions and then using batch normalization to help your neural network generalize to your test data and actually train better at the same time. Then the question was, how do you actually properly initialize them? The, the answer is it depends. It depends on your architecture. It depends on your activation function. Then we kept uh, introducing new concepts when it comes to convolutions and how to combine them together. Then there was this idea of trying to go deeper at the same time being able to train your neural networks. And we borrowed some ideas from recurrent neural networks and gating mechanisms. And then we said, you don't actually need the gating mechanism. You can actually do uh, ResNet without any coefficients in front of your X. And it's actually better not to have any coefficients. That was the topic of this paper. And then uh, somebody came along and said, not only you, know, you need to go deep, you can also make your neural network wider and get the same level of performance. Then we started worrying a little bit about efficiency of our neural networks. And then we introduced this idea of group convolutions and ResNext, which are a little bit more efficient than pure convolutions. Then we introduced dense nets, which are an extension of residual connections. Inception v4 is introducing the ideas of res nets and some other modifications to your neural networks. And these are all about architectures. So the trend is with deep learning, you want to put a very large model on your GPU and then try to fit it to your data, train it. So you're gonna fit as large a model as possible. And then the question is, how are you actually gonna train this? Because it's a large model. If it's really large compared to the size of your data, you're gonna overfit. And then you're not gonna be able to generalize to your test data. So that's the big picture. And uh, from this point on, as soon as you found an architecture, you, you fit it on your GPU, on your hardware, you try to regularize it. For instance, batch normalization was a regularization technique. Uh, dropout was a regularization technique, data augmentation, uh, label smoothing, and mix-up is another idea for data augmentation. And then we said, now that you have a very large model, can you actually train your neural networks faster given enough resources? Maybe you have plenty of GPUs in front of you. But then starting with this paper, we have started to go beyond convolutions. We are looking for new ideas. Maybe convolutions are not how humans see. Maybe we pay attention to particular portions of the image before making a decision. And then we have started to introduce attentions in a series of papers. These are simplified attentions. One of them was across space. The other one is across channels. The other one is a combination of the two, CBAM, across channels and across space, across your image. And then at the same time, we introduce a new type of data augmentation. So as you can see, we are going back and forth between architectures and trying to be able to train them. And because if you focus on one thing, then you're gonna forget about how, how do you actually want to train it. So every once in a while, I'm introducing topics for training, for instance, data augmentation, even residual connections, even uh, dropouts and so on. And then we said, uh, okay, you are trying to go beyond convolutions. Let's continue with that trend. And let's actually try to go beyond residual connections. 
or even go beyond the concept of having discrete layers? What if you have a continuous depth for your neural network? What is going to happen? And we saw that for some applications, it is actually really useful. It's going to help you reduce the cost from cubic to linear, this idea of continuous depth. And at the same time, it's giving you constant memory. Because whenever you are doing backpropagation, you need to store the computations that you make uh, in your forward pass. Because when you want to go backward, you're going to need them. And that's why ResNet has an order of L in terms of memory. L is the depth. So backpropagation is a combination of the chain rule from a math mathematical perspective and from a computer science pers perspective, it's this idea of memoization. So you are memorizing your computations. Memoization, okay? Are there any questions about neural ODs? And it's a while that we are trying to go beyond classical ideas of convolutional neural networks or discrete depth neural networks. So we are looking for new ideas. This was one of them, neural ODs. The other one is spatial transformer networks, which goes back to the ideas of attention. If you want to be uh, a little bit hand wavy, whenever you want to look at an image, maybe seven, and you want to classify it, you can focus on your number seven, tilt your head a little bit, and then say, yes, this is a seven. For five, you're gonna zoom in, and then uh, again, tilt your head a little bit, do some rotation, scaling, translation, get rid of the cluttering, and make your classification decision. This, are, this idea we're going to see again, this idea of having a change of coordinate a neural network. So it's a small neural network, localization net, that is doing a change of coordinate. We are going to see that later on when we are going to do object detection. And even further down the road, when we deal with 3D objects. Any questions about spatial transformer networks? So there is a question. I just want to make sure I understand what is happening. We transform the pixels of the input image, U, to create a map. Then we combine that with the transformed map with the binary sampling method to fill the pixel values of U. Uh, you're sort of right, to be more precise, this U could be the feature maps in any of your layers. It doesn't have to be your input image. It could be the feature maps from next layers in your neural network. That's one correction to make. The other one is your right. You have a target pixel here, pixel 1, 1. You can have a pixel 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and here 1,020 something and 1, etc. You know the pixel location. You'd, you want to read off the corresponding pixel value from your input image or from your input uh, feature map. How do you do it? You're gonna do, you're gonna use uh, bilinear sampling. So it's gonna be an interpolation. So you're right there. But at the same time, you're changing your coordinates. You are deciding which pixel of the input, which pixel of your input to read your value from. And that is the job of this localization net. That's going to tell you the target point is going to correspond to this particular source point, and then you're going to do interpolation. So does that answer your question? And uh, Brian, I guess this should answer your question as well. XT and YT, you know them. You just want to know the corresponding value that you're putting at that location in your target. I know you are used to this idea up until now. We never touched the coordinate system. We never touched the pixel locations, the coordinates of our pixel, pixel one, 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 two, one, three. We never touched them. We were only worrying about the convolution operations and the values. This is the first time that you are actually playing around with your coordinate system. Okay, perfect. Any other questions?